Okotov, today's the office, the office Sadik in Baba Basra's Lim Parchenu Kobesh is wrong, Asun Basar Vasivya. Says the Gemara at the two dots, about halfway down on the page. Amr Shmuel, Amos Sifan Al Midos Yosem Ishtus. Now, you know, there's there's a measure. So let's talk about a liter or a kilo, whatever the measure is. You're not supposed to add on to them. Sometimes, you know, there were different, uh, I'm not sure if a, um, if a foot in America is the same as a foot in Britain, but uh, there were times when they changed the, uh, the measure, like they uh, changed the dollar or the, or the quarter, they added silver or took away the silver. There's things that sometimes the Tzibur does, even if they agree to it, but he says you should, Shmuel says you don't add on to measures more than a six. In other words, sometimes you might increase it. There might be a common agreement to increase it. Don't add more than a sixth on. And we'll see when he says a sixth, he means a sixth from the outside, which is really a fifth. So for example, if you were, uh, let's say the, uh, you were talking about a 100 liter measure. So uh, uh, to add on a six would be 120. Why? Because the, the uh, 20 that you added on is a sixth of the total. That's what we call milabar, not from the inside. In other words, it's, not a, it's a fifth from the inside, right? It would be 20% of 100 would be 20, and you add that on to 120, comes out, it's a sixth of the total. So he says you shouldn't add on more, even if there's common agreement. And we'll see why. Let's say you increase the coinage. Also, you shouldn't add more than a sixth. You shouldn't make a profit of more than a sixth. Now, we're not talking here about Ono yet, right? Where it was where we you cheated the person by more than a sixth of its value, but rather we're talking here about profits. You shouldn't make a profit of more than a sixth. Tomorrow's going to add on, going to, going to uh, try to understand all these now. So Shmuel said three things. You can't increase measures by more than a sixth. Mashma that a sixth you could. Can't add on to the um, a dollar. Let's say you say it's a dollar. A dollar is worth now 120 uh, pennies, whatever. It's 120 cents. Can't add more than that. And you shouldn't make a profit of more than a sixth. Now, he says, Amos, even on Mido, you shouldn't add on to a measure more than a six my time. What's the reason? Because you're going to increase, uh, you're going to have simply a price increase. In other words, you shouldn't increase the prices by so much because it's going to affect the poor people, the common person. It's going to have to spend more money of a salary to buy basic items. If it's because you're going to increase the market price of these items. So why should you even increase it by a six? Why does it say don't increase the prices by more than uh, a six. Why should you improve it even? Why should you uh, uh, in, increase it even by a six? Why, what's the reason for that? Elamishum, oh no. Maybe it's because you're gonna cheat people. Meaning what they thought cost a dollar, you're gonna charge them a dollar 20. Is it because of that? Because, oh no. Uh, why? To love it, because if it's more than a six, we, what did we learn? When it comes to, oh no, by cheating, by by the prices, you know, when it comes to taking more than the, uh, than the market value of the item, we say up until a sixth, the person's mochel. If it's a sixth, the money, the sixth has to be given back, but the deal stands. If it's more than a sixth, the whole deal is off. So is it because of that? That's why you shouldn't increase it more than a sixth because then the deal would be off? Says the Gemara Mishma, no, because if it's more than a sixth, the deal will be off. This is we say that if you cheat, let me just finish this thought. If you, if this is what we say that uh, if you cheat by more than a sixth, the deal is off, meaning the price for the car should have been $10,000. But I charge you $13,000. That's too much. That's more than a sixth over the value. That's, but, but the price is there. There's no fixed price. Some, some dealers will charge 9,000. Some will charge 11,000. I charge 13. That's too much. That whole idea of a no of more than a sixth is only by, by items that, you know, they don't have a specific value to them. But it's close. There's a manufacturer suggested retail. When it comes to a measure or a weight or a count, if I sell you 12 eggs, a dozen eggs, and um, I only give you 11, well, even if it's less than a sixth, but I cheated you, you're supposed to buy 12 and I gave you 11. Or if you took 13 instead of 12, right, then, then you cheated me. When it comes to something which has a count or a measure, or I'm selling you a pound of... Uh, of cheese. Here's a pound of cheese. And I measure out nine tenths of a pound. It's less than a six, but I cheated you. You're supposed to get a pound, right? So when it comes to something which is a measure or a weight or a count, I feel possibly don't know, Jose. Anything if the deal's off, you cheat. You got cheated. Either I got cheated or you got cheated. So the six, what's this business about the six? 
Is it because of the price will be increases? So you should, why do you charge, why do you charge even more than a, why do you charge a sixth more? You shouldn't, you shouldn't raise the prices, uh, stum, you know, uh, you're going to change the prices now. You shouldn't cheat, raise the prices, period. If it's because of cheating, and that's the idea of a sixth, that don't do by more than a sixth because then the deal's off, but a sixth would be okay. No, any amount is no good. If I sell you 100 eggs, and I only give you a 99, that's cheating also. That you're not allowed to say, well, it's less than a six different. I sold you a hundred or I sold you a pound. You can't <laughs> cheat a, when it comes to a, a measure or a weight or a count, you can't cheat at all. So then the deal would be off anyway. El Glover said to Latagra, oh, maybe this is the idea. A person comes to town with his wares and he thought, and he didn't know that the measure got bigger. So he starts, you know, what happens? Let's say the measure got bigger by a sixth, right? Uh, whatever it was, let's say there's a hundred kilo uh, sack and they said the sack is now 120 kilos. We're gonna, now that's gonna be the standard, 120 kilos. The guy who comes to town, he didn't know that they increased it. He's still selling the price at a hundred kilos, but he's giving away, he's giving away his profit. Why? Because he's still selling for the price that a hundred kilo went for, hundred kilo went for, but the, but the new standard is 120 kilos. So he's going to be giving 120 kilos away for the price of 100. And there goes his profit. So that's the maybe that's the issue over here. I would love to say the Latagra shouldn't be a loss for the merchant who comes to town and doesn't know that the uh, standard got bigger and he's still selling at the old price. So And what's going to happen? There's his profit because his profit's usually one sixth. So what are you saying then? So he shouldn't have a loss? Say to Hudo Havila, so he won't have a loss. Rafka Leboy doesn't need a profit. You know, as if he if his profit is is a six, that's his profit margin. And he's giving away an extra sixth of merchandise, he's just lost his profit. So you're saying, oh, okay, you shouldn't do it because of that. Well, is that enough? Not that you shouldn't have a profit. What about what about a gain? What kind of a merchant is that? We have a famous cloud, Rafka Leboy, Zovin the Zovin Tagrikri. If a person buys and sells at the same price, is that called the merchant? I went and I bought merchandise for $100 and I sold it for $100. What kind of a merchant am I? Without a profit, you're not a merchant. You didn't do anything, right? You have to be able to sell something. You have to be able to make a profit. So what's this idea that you shouldn't cheat by more than, you shouldn't increase the standard. You shouldn't increase the standard. If the standard is 100 kilos, the sacks are 100 kilos, don't make them 120. What's the reason? What's the reason? Is it because you're increasing the prices? Why increase it? Why even a sixth is okay? It says, shouldn't do it more than a six. Mashman that a six is okay. Okay, the six is the six from the outside. But a six, why should even a why should even a twelfth or a tenth be okay? If it's because of cheating, well, if it's a if it's a measure, you're cheating on any amount. If it's because you're cheating and you're gonna cheat by people, they won't know that the uh that you're 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 cheating by you know taking away, you know, you're giving them less or giving them more depending on who's getting cheated, that any amount would be no good. If it's because maybe the merchant won't make a profit because he would come to town and not know that the standard was increases. So why do you say you shouldn't increase it by more than a six so he shouldn't get, so he shouldn't have a loss. He shouldn't have a loss, but he won't have a gain either. So what's the, what kind of a saying that he shouldn't have a, a loss for the, uh, he won't have a loss, but otherwise, well, in other words, don't cheat by more than a six. Could go up to a six, but if you cheat, but if, it, if the standard went up by a six and he doesn't know about it, He's going to lose his whole profit anyway. So what are you saying? He, if you cheat by more, if you increase the standard by more than a six, he won't have a he, he uh, um he, he'll have a loss. So this way he won't have a loss, but he'll just break even. So what's the what's the advantage there too? You haven't helped him. Elam Rav Chista, when Shmuel said these rules that you don't add on to the measures by more than a six, and you don't increase the count the coinage by more than a sixth of its value, and you shouldn't make a profit. He based it on a pasuk in Yecheskel. Amar Chesa Shmuel Kra Ashri found a pasuk in Yecheskel. But Darshan he darshaned it this way. It's not really because of these different reasons. He simply darshaned it this way. What was that? He says that the pasuk in Yecheskel says Vah Shekel. Now Shekel in the in, to, in Tanakh is what the rabbis call the Sela, which means there's four dinners, four dinners or four zuz. Dinner and zuz is the same thing. Uh, that there's four dinners to a shekel in the Torah, which is a zu, which is a Sela. In the Lashon of the Chachamim. So it's a shekel, Estrum Geira is 20 Geira. Geira is like a Ma'a, and there's five Geira in a dinner. So if there's 20 Geira, that's four dinners, five to a dinner. And um, the shekel has four dinners. So, okay, how much is that? So he says, Estrum Shkolem, 20 shekels, 
20 shekels, you have 20 shekels. What is the 20 shekels? We'll see we're not done yet. You have to see the whole posse. 20 shekels, 25 shekels, 20 and 25 is how much? 45. And then he says, Asara, uh, the Hamisha shekel, another 15. So you have 45 and 15, the 60 shekels. Amana Yilachem, that's the mana. What is a mana? Mana means normally 100. It's usually when we in the Lashon of the Gemara, mana means 100 dinars or 100 zuz. But here he says that the mana is how much? Is 20 shekels plus 25 shekels plus 15 shekels. That's 60 shekels. 60 shekels would be how many dinars? Again, a shekel in the Tanakh is a sela in the Lashon of Chachamim, or it would be 240. Right? It would be 60 times 4, 60 times 4, 4 dinars to a shekel. That's 240. So wait a minute. So the mon is normally 100 dinars. It says over here that it, the shekel is 20, is 4 dinars, right? S from Geber is 4 dinars. And then he says 20 shekels and 25 shekels and 15 shekels. That's the mona. So it's the Gemara and Amit Beis. Mona, uh, mona, so how much is the mona? 240. Is it 240? Mona is Mosan the Arban Hafei. How can it be 240? We know normally a mana is, is 100, not 240 dinners. Ela shmami no. You see from over here, class, you see three things from here. Shmami no, because here we're talking about Yechesko. Yechesko was talking about in the mana in the base of Migdash. At his time, they increased it. Shmami no, class, you see three things here. Number one, shmami no, mana shal kodesh kafel. The mana in the base of Migdash is double, is double. So number one, it's not 100, it's 240. Or looking at it from a shekel's point of view, right? It took him from a shekel's point of view, it's not uh, four, uh, a shekel is not four dinars, but it's rather eight. Okay. Shmamina manash l'kodesh kafalaya. Shmamina mosifin alamidos. And you see over here that you can add on, right? Because they added on. The meter was 100 when, and the mana was 100. Now it's 200. Ushmami no, oh, it says you add on to me is the Amos Sifin Yosem Mishus. Now, the Amos Sifin Yosem Mishus, we don't see that over here. Here it is a sixth, but he's not saying that you don't add more than a sixth. You don't necessarily from that, but that Shmuel added on. You see from Obiyah Shmami no, Amos Sifin Alamidos, the Amos Sifin Yosem Mishus. That's what Shmuel added on. What's, so the first thing you see is that the Midah of the base of Migdash was double. Instead of 100, the Mana being 100 is 200. Number two, you see that you could add on because it's not 200, it's 240. And how much was added added on? A sixth, again, the sixth from the outside. Once you have 240, right? And you added on of uh, you added on 40 out of that, 40 out of 240 is one sixth, right? So you added on one sixth. Ushmami no, it's just malabai, that it sees from the outside, that the sixth is not from the inside. The sixth of 200 is how much? A sixth of 200 would be like, uh, 33, right? 33 and a third, something like that. So you're adding on more. Here you're adding on a six from the outside. That's why it's that's why it's uh, it's it's uh, 40. It's 40. So those are the three things. In other words, he said Shmuel just he didn't base it on cheating or not cheating. He just based it on this idea that he said that you can't that um, you add you don't add on more than a six because you see from the base of Mikdash that it was doubled, but he added on a six. So you, based on that, you don't add on more than that. And he and he extrapolated that also to the uh, to coins you don't add more and he added on also that uh, you shouldn't or you shouldn't uh, make a profit of more than a six so he's real he's really describing how do you see the measure uh, the measure of Amos Sif and Alistus when it comes to a measure Amos Sif and Alamidos he based it on the Pasuk and okay so all yeah. because you have a chart of six you gotta have a chart more than six that's going to be the manufacturer that's right that's for oh no that's for oh no Right. That's right. 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 So the sixth profit is also something that the rabbis added on based on, that it added on based on this idea of increasing by a sixth. But the idea of oh no, I said, doesn't apply when it comes to measures, because measures, if you cheat at all, if I sold you a thousand eggs and I and I only gave you nine hundred ninety nine, that's cheating. That they're cheating that deals. So that the oh no is for manufacturers to just like a car or a large item or a coat or whatever, a computer, things that don't have an exact price, but it's something that's a weight or a measure or, or a count that has to be exact. So it's not because of ONA, it's simply because of uh, markets. You see, he based on the public telling you that 
uh, you could, um, uh, when it comes to the base of Migdash, they doubled it, but they had, they had more than doubled it. The mana was 100 and he made it 240. How do you get 240? Because he doubled it and added a six. So you see this idea of a six from the base of Migdash. And you shouldn't do more than that. But it's mostly really a, a dindra bana. A dindra bana that based it on this idea, you shouldn't increase things by more than a six. So don't increase a measure by more than a six. Don't increase uh, coinage by more than a six. And don't make a profit of more than a six. But those are rab rab rabbinic enactments. And this that he says, what about the fact that uh, a guy might come to town and not know that it's uh, the, the, that the standards have increased and he's going to sell it at the old price and therefore have a loss? That's very unlikely. But if it's more than a six, if the loss is more than a six, then he's really going to have a loss. Right? It's really going to have a loss, and that's not fair. So you shouldn't do more than that. This that true, if you increase it by a six, he, uh, a guy who comes to town and doesn't know that the standard was increased will lose his profit, not gain anything. That's very unlikely. So explains the rush bomb. Um, and people know it, right? And you're allowed to go that far, add on things more than a six, but not more than that. That's what you see in the Pusik. 240 is double plus a six. That's as far as you can go. Uh, Rapapa, Rapapa says the Gemara in the end of the fourth line. Rapapa bar Shmuel, talking Chayla bar Tlosa Kapizi. He made a new measure. Chayla is a measure of three Kapizi. Rashi has two, Rajbam has two Pshat, and either three Kapizi is either nine log or three log. Okay. But whatever it is, he made this new measure. Uh, and um, um, uh, right, and they said to him, Lay, they told him, You shouldn't add one more than a six. Now, what he's saying is he's comparing it to other measures that were there already. So, according to Rashbam's first shot, that he says, What that, um, that it's that's nine low because a kapisa is a, is a three low, is three low, and you're adding and you're making this, uh, this kapisa, you're making. Not uh, th uh, three times three, three capizis. In other words, this kaila is three capizis, so it's nine low. So they asked him, uh, well, well, what you have a problem over here. Why? Because you're not allowed to add on more than a six. And there's other measures that are there before. Why? A tar kab, we said, is three kab. Three kab is how much? Is tw uh, three times, there's four, four log and a kab. So that's 12. So in a Vizen knows of Al Khatsi Karkov Shlish. Why the Khatsi Karkov the the Khatsi Tarkov a Tarkov is three. Khatsi Tarkov would be one and a half. Right? Uh right. The the Khatsi Tarkov Hainu Kav Bachetsi, uh Shahin Bavlugan, which is six low, right? Because if a kav is four low and a tarka a khatsi tarkov is a half of three low, that would be six low. So therefore. If he increased that, if he made this measure, in other words, a chazi tarkov is six log, and he made a new measure of nine log, well, that's going to be confused. You're increasing the chazi tarkov by more than a six. Okay, and it says other examples would be if you learn that uh, that a kapisa is one is uh, one log, means is a log, and please increase with three log, so you're increasing it by another measure of uh, of a uh, chazi kav. A chazi kav would be two log. You're making it three log. So you're increasing it by more than a six. So we just learned that you can't increase measures by more than a six. So how did he institute this new measure, which is too close to a different measure, more than a six? So how do you do that? How did they ask him? Amr Lui answer him, no. I made a new measure. We didn't, where in his locality, he didn't have those other measures. He didn't have a chatsi tarkav or a chatsi kav. He didn't have those. So there's nothing to compare it to. Another his idea is that you shouldn't have measures which are close to one another because you'll confuse one for another and somebody will get cheated. It says the other measures didn't exist in this town. They sent it to the Kumpadis, but they didn't accept that answer. They sent it to Punya, but Kablu, and they accepted that answer. And as I said, in that place, they didn't have those other measures. So you can't say, oh, you increase the measure by more than a third. This measure is more than a third than that measure. And you might confuse them, and more than a sixth, rather. It's like a third, and, 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 you're, and you're cheating somebody. No, they didn't have those other measures. So they sent it to Papunya, that place, and they accepted the and they called it Ruz Papa, or Riz Papa, as right? Bami Yassi Pierre said. No, that's the measure of a Papa, because he made that uh, that measure. And that's what he said, Rav Papa Bashmu made that measure, and some people accepted it, some people didn't. Apparently, in the place where they had similar measures, which were, uh, which you might, which you might confuse with one, with, with this one, and the increase was, let's say, more than a six, more than the other measures, so you might confuse them. 
but in a place where they didn't have the measures, it's okay. Tan Rabbanan, Otsre Paris, the people who hoard fruits. Now, what would people do? They would buy up the market, uh, the market uh, grain or whatever fruits and hold on to them. And then there was a shortage, right? Price, uh, it, uh, you know, you have supply and demand. And then they would sell it at a high price and cheat all the poor people. Umalave Baribis and the people who lend money for interest, the usurers. Umaktini for the people who made measures smaller, they cheated. Instead of giving you a pound, they gave you three quarters of a pound. Umaftiyashom are the people who raised prices. They what's called price gouging. Remember that word? <laughs> price gougers, right? Alayna Kasvam about them, the Pasuk says, lay more. They said, you know, these are evil people who said, oh, Masayavar Achodesh. When will the month pass? Rashbam explains this means when will the month after the harvesting season pass? They waited till all the harvesting season passed, right? That means that during the harvesting season they could sell, but they waited. And they waited a month afterwards. So now there was a shortage. They had they had, they had hoarded all this goods. Huh? They cornered the, they cornered the market, exact cornered the market. And they said, let's wait a month. And Rashbam says, not just a month, a month after the harvesting season. And then we will sell our produce, we'll wait till Shemitah has passed, when people don't have anything, right? And the people haven't produced already for a year. So we'll, let's wait till the Shemitah has passed. Rashbam says, uh, and then we will open up our, when there's Shemitah and people don't have, we'll open up our storehouses. We'll open up and we will open up the, uh, the granary. Lahakta uh, and will give smaller measures, give them a small amount, and Hagdil Shekel to make more money, to make, you know, to bring in more profits. Rosh Bam says Hagdil Shekel is speaking about Malave Baribis. How do you make a shekel bigger? <laughs> you make a shekel bigger by lending it out for a shekel and getting back two shekels, right? That's how you make it bigger. Ula Abbas Mazne Mirma, and to cheat with the balance, uh, scales of, of the seed, to cheat everybody. Except what, it say, what does it say afterwards? All these people, what does it say about them? Pasik says, oh, that's what you think you're going to do. It's Nishba Hashem, Hashem swears by the pride of Jacob. If I will, I'll never forget. Uh, if I'll never forget all their bad things. Oh, Ribus, what about, what is it, what, oh, say Paris, what do we mean by people who hoard fruits? Give an example. So, uh, give an example. Oh, say Paris, Kagon man, Amriyachon, Shabsai, Oh, say Paris. There was a crook there known by the name Shabsai. He was one who hoarded. Paris. Paris means, you know, not just fruits, it could be grain or anything. He ordered them and then sold them at a high price. Now he tells you a story. Avu the Shmuel, Shmuel's father was at Sadiq. Mazvin le Peru betara kharfa. He would sell his own uh, produce, right, at the low price. Betara means at the early price, when the stuff wasn't in high season yet. Ketara kharfa, at the low price. And as he would sell it at the low price, and therefore he kept the price down. By selling it, by making food available, at the at the early price, at the early that's the the lower price, the early price, he would sell throughout and keep the prices low that way. Shmuel, Bray, Shmuel, his own son, the father, uh, his son of Avodah Shmuel, that's Shmuel himself. Mashi Lepere, he wouldn't sell at the early price. He would hold he would hold on to his. We're not talking about he didn't go out of the market and buy all the market stuff up. That would have been a bad thing. What he did was he held it, his own produce. He kept it. He didn't sell. Mashi Lepere, Umazvenu, and he would sell it to Tara Afla and sell it. At the later price, at the later market, meaning when it was high price, Qatar Kharfa, like the early price. In other words, Shmuel's father sold it all along. Right away, he sold it at early price, kept the prices low. Shmuel himself say, thought he would be a good guy. He would take the produce and save it up. And then when the prices went up, he would sell it at the low price. They both did good deeds. However, the Gemara says, Shalcham uh, and they sent from Eretz Yisrael, Tavit Abba Mirabra. His father was better than the son. Why? Because um, Shmuel indeed sold at the later higher price. He sold the lower price, right? But his father did even better because he never allowed the market to go up. He sold he sold it at the lower price right from the beginning. You know, as he said, let's sell it all along. Don't hoard anything. So what his father was considered better than the son, my timer. Tower the Rebbe Rebbe. Once the prices have been eased, in other words, he had the price. He didn't allow the price to go up. So Shmuel's father right away sold at the early at the early stage. He sold it like the early price. Shmuel himself figured, oh, he'll be nice when the prices go up. He'll sell at the lower price. But his father did even better. Amrav, Osa Adam as Kabo Osa. A person can make his own top, his own measure, meaning his own produce that he grows on his own thing. 
uh, he can he could uh, he could he could store that if he wants to. That's not a terrible thing to do. It's his own. We're not talking about where he bought stuff in the in the street and you know in the market and uh, and saved that up. Masha Malaka Rashbam says he said also. The answer is to buy up, like you say, corn of the market, buy everything up, and then and then hoard it. I'm gonna ask lots to say to in order to store it. Uh, but for Mamila Parnas, basically, you have this. I mean, it's, it's, if he doesn't have anything you can buy for yourself and hold up for your own needs, you can hold. You, there's nothing wrong, wrong with buying for your own needs. You're buying, let's say, for the winter. You buy it all up now, so you'll have in, in the uh, throughout the season. That's okay. It's also okay, you know, to keep your own stuff. If you, you know, there's no reason why you have to sell it out in the market. What's forbidden is to buy up the market, to buy everything out of the market, and hoard that in order to cheat the people to uh, to mark, to like you say, to corner the market. And that way you'll save in Israel. Pardon? You'll save in Israel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He did it. He was giving it out, right? He was he was giving yeah, it out. Yeah. It. Yeah. So that was that was a special case. That was a special case. And he didn't he didn't hoard it to increase the price. He hoarded it to be able to give people when he knew that there was going to be seven years no, of eventually in order to enslave the children. children. In order to what? Enslave the land. Enslave the land, yeah, yeah. But but he, he did that eventually. But but his intention was not to corner the market and then cheat the people. His his, his intention was to save everything up so that the people wouldn't starve during the seven years. That's not the same. That was a special case, and he knew what was coming. He knew that there was going to be a, a, a if if you knew that today, if the Gemara would never say, if you knew today that in the next 10 years there's going to be a famine, uh, there'd be nothing wrong with saving up the stuff because your intention was not to cheat the people, it was to have to, it's for survival. It's a different case. Amarab. So you can make your own uh, land, you can increase you, you can say that, that you're not, as long as you don't corner the market, there's nothing wrong with saving your own stuff up for later on, even. If you are going to sell it later on, uh, there's no issue. Even if you're going to sell it later on, and you're going to, and the price might go up later on, but there's nothing wrong with keeping your own stuff. Because the issue is in cornering the market. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't corner the market or store up produce or fruits, so things that are. Uh, that are basic necessities. Like wine, oil, and flour, those are basic necessities. You're not allowed to store that up. Again, if you uh, buy it up, buy up the market and store it away. Of all, tavlin spices like uh, cumin, kamon, which is cumin, poplin, peppers, mutu, you're allowed to do that because those aren't necessities. Those aren't basic necessities. So therefore, there you could, uh, you could corner that market if you want. And uh, you know, and everybody's entitled to uh, to uh, supply and demand. more and below when shook. That's all when you buy it in the shook. Abo machnati shalo. If you buy your own stuff, then everything is mutter. Even if it's wine and and uh, and flour and oil and things which are necessities that you're allowed to do. Mutter l'adam matzor peros beretz yisrael gimel shanim. You're allowed to store fruits in eretz yisrael. Again, fruits means uh, grain, etc. For three years. When is that? Which three years? Arab Shvias, Arab Shmita, Shmita, Shvias, and Watsoy Shvias for those three years, because then you can't grow stuff. So then you're allowed to store it, even apparently if you're buying, because your own stuff you're always allowed to. This is even if you're buying in the market, you're allowed to buy, so you'll have then. Shnebetsoros. Oh, here's your case with Yosef Shnebetsoros. Afil Kav Charuben, Lo Yatser. In a year of Betsoros, when it's Soros right now, when it's a famine right now, even a Kav, a, a small amount of Caribs, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't store away. They should not because you what you've done is you put a curse into the markets. In other words, once there's a shortage, there's a curse, and people start uh, you know there's a stampede, and it just you know there's a there's a run on on the market, and everything goes up in price. So in a time of famine, even caribs, which aren't considered a necessity, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't store away. Only Rabbi Yosef Chanina the Puga Shamay. Rabbi Yosef said to Puga his servant. Poco out, Atsarli Hashem. Go out and store for me uh, three years of Paris. What are those? What three years? There you're allowed to do because you're allowed to take Paris for three years if it's those three years. That you're allowed to store away, even if it means buying them in the market. It meant your own stuff from your own fields, you're allowed to do whatever you like with it. And at any time you could store it. But if there's a uh, if there's a year of famine, you're not allowed to store, you're not allowed to buy and store and store anything. 
And if it's not a if it's not a time of famine, you're allowed to do that with um, with spices, let's say, but not with staples, things that are up on that, things that are necessary for for a living. Turn around, bottom. Amos in Paris, Eretz Israel. You don't take out fruits from Eretz Israel. from kind of. Don't remove food from Eretz Israel if it's necessary to keep the population fed, right? Kagon yenos shmeinu meseltas. For example, oil, uh, wine, oil, and and flour should not be removed from Eretz Israel at all, at all. Things that those those are uh, you know staples. Rabbi Yudah Maseira matir behind. He says wine you could export. Obviously, we do today because there's plenty. This is speaking about where you would hurt the market and then people wouldn't be able to afford to buy these items. A beautiful Maseri allowed it even then in wine, Meshem Maita Satipla, because this way you, you decrease immorality because wine increases immorality. So he says, if you want to export the wine, you're allowed to take it out because we don't need so much wine. It's just like you can't, now let's remove the other ones, which have, apparently there's no discussion about the oil and the flour, just like you don't take it from Eretz Yisrael to Chutzlars, Kach Ein Motzin, you also don't remove Eretz Yisrael to Surya. You don't take it out from Eretz Yisrael to Surya, even though Surya was considered part of Eretz Yisrael in the time of David. As Rav says, the Kibush Yachalosh Me Kibush, because that's the fact that David conquered, it's not part of Eretz Yisrael, and you're not allowed to take food staples out of Eretz Yisrael to Chutzlars. Obviously, this is basic drinking, you know, wine is what is, was the, was the uh, mashka that they had, and oil was necessary for cooking, and it was used in baking, etc. And flour, which all the you know all the grains, we mean the fl- all kinds of uh, grain flour, uh, you're not allowed to move move from Eretz Israel. But Rebbe Matir Miyafrachia Lefrachia, from one province to another province in Eretz, from Eretz Israel to Baba to uh, Surya, is Rashi's Achla Miyafrachia Achuna, the last province in Eretz Israel on the border. You're allowed to take the Lefrachia Rishona in Surya, because since they they're right next to each other. It's it's allowed. Tana Rabbanan, at the top of Tzadikala. Aim is talking about Yisrael. You're not allowed to make a profit in Yisrael, but Gorm Sheesh from Chayi Nefesh, right? You're not allowed to make a, what we call a price gouging, right? You know, be, um, meaning you shouldn't you shouldn't be a middleman, meaning in Eretz Yisrael where the staples are necessary, the wine, the oil, and the uh, flour, you shouldn't become a middleman there, meaning let the let the balabai sell directly to the customers, um, but let them sell directly to customers. Right? But in other words, when you have the individual homeowners or farmers. Could sell directly to the uh, people for selling uh, grapes or, or flour, things like that. They can make if it's something that's necessary. There's a lot of work involved. So then Rosh Baum says, "Going to lick those feet and losses pass." Then you're allowed to because uh, the, then then there's work involved. So there could be a middleman. What he's saying over here is a mistakrim that you shouldn't buy wine, oil, and flour from a balabayas to sell it in the market because there's too many hands. There's a middleman involved, so there's extra profit made. Better that the Balabais themselves should sell to the customers. Then you're allowed to. In other words, if you're a baker and you're going to buy wheat from the homeowner, from the farmer, and then make bread out of it, that you're allowed to do. Since there's a lot of work involved, it's it's mutter because not every homeowner is going to be, be able to bake his own bread. So you need bakers. But something which is sold, obviously, to directly to uh, consumers that you should allow them to sell directly and you shouldn't be a middleman there. And what are we speaking about? He did. He, he, did uh, what, he did become a middleman, went against this law when it comes to wine and oil. Why? When it comes to wine, he like who says that uh, wine is... Uh, it's okay if we decrease the amount of wine in Eretz Yisrael because that leads to immorality. So he says it's okay uh, if there's a middleman involved and then some profits are made there and less wine is available to the poor people. The Shemen, what about in oil? Why do you allow oil for the middleman? There's plenty of oil. So this really gives you the heter for we have today, which means basically that we export anything. You can export bread, and wine, and oil, whatever. Whatever there's plenty of, there's no problem. These were rules that were enacted to protect the poor, to protect the middle class 
that they should have these things available to them. But if there's plenty available, then obviously there's no there's no iser. These were uh, rabbinic enactments that were allowed. Uh, that were you know exceptions were made when there's a plenty to be when there's plenty. So here they you know they export yogurt and all kinds of stuff and milk that you're allowed to if there's plenty around. All right, we'll pick it up here tomorrow. Mitzvah Shem Tanarabanan, the sixth line on Sadek Aleph. Yom Tov Lekulam. Where is the Shesu? Where is the Shesu?